So in this video, I want to talk specifically about how to talk to girls in the area of creating sexual tension with pushes. This is a really important video for nice guys. So if you're a nice guy out there, then definitely pay attention to this video because so many of you nice guys really focus heavily on poles or in other words, complimenting your girl. And so how to use pushes as a form of increasing tension to get a girl attracted to you as a man. Matter of fact, I think your ability as a man is equivalent to a woman being super sexually attractive. It's in a sense, your tits and ass. So stick around to the end of the video and look at how subtle this stuff gets. A lot of guys give obvious examples, but the honest truth is that pushes can get very subtle and have a very powerful effect very quickly when delivered properly. So let's get started. By the way, I'm here in Miami right now. I'm trying to find a good spot with good lighting for you guys walking around. Uh, it's beautiful. We just finished the Integrated Man Summit and having a great day. And I've been thinking a lot about this because a lot of my clients are actually nice guys. They're really sweet and they really care. And they want to just go out and give compliments and tell a girl she's pretty or you look great in that dress or you have a great vibe. And unfortunately, they don't do a good job of it because they release tension in the process. You can give compliments and you can give compliments and create tension at the same time if you're really good at it. But unfortunately, you got to kind of get used to it first. You got to get used to feeling the congruency and, and the vibration of your compliment. You got to get used to feeling the energy behind it and what you're saying and the rise and fall of the tension. You really want to calibrate your tension to be the proper amount for the situation. You want to learn to use really good, in a sense, tension skills. You know, just like a surfer on a wave, if he leans too far one way, too far back, too far forward, he's going to fall off that wave. He's gonna crash. And it's the same thing. When you're talking to somebody, your vocal tone, your expressions, your subtle communication, your eye contact, your uh, everything kind of factors in. And if you think about all that, you're just gonna go nuts. But when you start learning to feel it, when you start learning to pay attention to the subtle vibrations that go on, it changes everything. And then pretty soon you start to get spontaneous with it and you develop an unconscious competence and you just start to blurt things out and they seem to work because now you're just having fun. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's talk about a pole so you understand, and I kind of already did, but I just kind of want to review this, is if I just walk up to a girl and say, you know what, you're looking really beautiful today, or there's something, you know, really, you have a beautiful dress on, or you have a great vibe about you, that's a pole. And unfortunately, a lot of nice guys are constantly releasing tension. And so what do I mean by this? If I walk up to a girl and I say, wow, you're looking, you're looking really beautiful today, that's okay. I could be like, damn, you're looking really good today. A little bit more tension. Or I can be like, wow, you're really pretty. Uh, you're looking really pretty today. And you can feel the release in tension. So you can you feel in those, those three different ways I said it, that there's a different level of tension in each one. Um, that dress looks really nice on you. That dress looks really nice on you. Two different vibrations, more tension in one, uh, less tension in the other. Uh, this, the second one had less tension in it, right? So that's what we're trying to understand. We're trying to understand the power of your subtle communication and tension. And we're specifically gonna do it with pushes. Right now I'm doing poles as an example. Um, that dress is really fucking damn sexy. I gotta tell you, you know, really bold. That's a lot of tension, right? So take this in for a minute that you can say things in a lot of different ways to create more or less tension. I would take the same bantery kind of comment and practice it. Matter of fact, practice it, record it, listen to it, listen to yourself, say it in different ways, record yourself on video so you can see your subcommunication, watch it, and get familiar with what feels good and kind of looks good when you watch the video, um, when you do this stuff. Now, let's get to pushes for a minute. Pushes are kind of like teases. You're in a really good, for the most part, emotional state. I'm light, but then I say something that's incongruent with what I'm feeling. Like, if I really like a girl, I'd be like, you know what, I think I like you. And there could be a little tension in that. But if I go, you know what, I, I really like you, I'm releasing tension when I say it. that's a pull. Okay, but if I look at a girl and I say, you know what, I don't like you. You can see that my energy does kind of like her, but I'm kind of saying the opposite to kind of play with her. I'm teasing her a little bit. In a sense, I'm fucking with her. And she knows it, she's not stupid. Girls are experts in this stuff. They've been doing it since they were young. So again, if I say something like, you know what, I don't like you. Or you know what, you're a dork. You're a goofball. You're trouble, aren't you? Those are all examples of pushes. I used to, 
open. I said this many times. I used to go to bars and my favorite open, uh, I would lead with a push because it just worked and I was good at it and I enjoyed it. And that's the big key. That's what makes it, in my mind, not a routine is when I was first learning, I'd walk up to girls in bars and I'd say, you know what, you look like trouble. And then we'd start a bantery kind of play. And um, some girls would say, no, I'm not trouble. Some girls would say, oh, I'm totally trouble. And then I would just say different things depending on what they said. I got so used to them saying things, I had all kinds of stuff to say back. And none of it was routine. I, I, I would say it different every time, but I would be very careful to monitor the level of tension and pull that I did within it. So for an example, if I said, you look like trouble, and she said, oh, I'm not trouble. And, I, and then I could, if I want to increase the tension, I could say, well, I am. And then see what she does. If I want to decrease the tension, now yeah, you, you're, you're right. You're probably not trouble. You're probably a sweet girl. It's a little bit of a push on that, actually. But, but you get the idea. It's not as rough as, no, I think you're totally trouble. So you start to get a feel for how the energy flows. It goes up and down. Uh, an example of this is the first time I did it was in an El Pollo Loco chicken restaurant. And uh, I was in, uh, I didn't know, I was terrified to do it. Guys, that bird's got a lot to say, by the way. I was terrified to do it. And I raised, uh, I, I was sitting there and I was looking at the girl and she was opening a new pack of quarters that were wrapped up in some plastic. And she bent down and looked, or told, excuse me, she looked down at the quarters and she was trying to rip the plastic open. She was having trouble with it. And nervously I said, come on, come on. I don't have all day, you know. And I did this little smile or smirk or something. And she was looking down, she didn't see it. And she goes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then she looked up and saw my smirk, looked me in the eyes and went, oh, well maybe I'll just, and then started to push back. I can't remember what she said exactly, but something like, well, maybe I won't give you your food or something like that. And then I laughed and I teased her something back. And then she handed me a large drink and said, here, take it for free. And I was like, what? And then I began to come back and do it more and more. I was doing it all the time. And I had three girls in there I was flirting with, and this taught me a lot because I was getting all kinds of free food. I get free meals. I get food handed to me through the drive-thru. I started to do it in other places, and I noticed as I started to tease people, it was kind of almost a form of earning their respect. Oh, this guy's cool. As long as I did it from this good feeling place. Now, if I did it incongruently, it didn't work. If I looked at the girl and I seriously, when if a heavier energy said, you know what, I don't have all day. Can you hurry up? And this heavier energy started to come out. It has a different effect. If I walked up to women in bars and said, you know what, you look like trouble. It's gonna cause a different response. Depending on the girl and her personality, I'm gonna get very different responses. And I did sometimes, because I was a little off back then. Nowadays, it's much, much easier. So I would get very different responses depending on how I was ca calibrated, my energy, my flow, who I was being. It would change a lot and it would change the way they responded to me. Uh, nowadays I get much better responses and I don't even think about it much. Um, so pushes come in many forms. You begin to realize as you do them more and more, there's obvious blatant pushes, like you look like a dork, you look like trouble, you're a goofball. And, uh, and you wanna mix, by the way, mix the pushes with the pulls, but really work on those pushes if you're a nice guy, because you tend to do uh, some nice guys only do poles. They won't do a push because they're terrified. They're freaking out inside. Some nice guys will do three or four poles to a push. And really, if you're a nice guy, start focusing on maybe two, two pushes to a pole once you get somewhat calibrated. If you're not calibrated, take your time, work your way into it, practice until you can start getting fun responses from the pushes. And by the way, some people just are no fun. So don't worry about those people. Some people just can't play they're bad at it okay <laughs> that's a small minority of attractive women but they are out there and you do have that problem okay i don't really want to hang out or date those women anyways i don't want to be hanging out all day with somebody that's serious so with that said as we dive in a little deeper pushes get a lot subtler pushes get a lot subtler so an example of this is something like you know what i really like you most of the time you know there's a little pole on the end or you're really you know you're kind of cool the kind of makes it even subtler or you're you're you're, you're getting that okay that's okay yeah interesting well, and she'll be like what does that mean what are you saying no nothing nothing oh you you really you, you're serious you're getting that okay nothing um that's very different than you know you're a dork and it, it's fun and it's playful again i would do it in a playful way and keep playing with them uh, you know, the other day I was talking to two girls 
and one girl was Brazilian, one girl was Venezuelan. The one girl said she was Brazilian. I did a total poll. Oh my God, I've always wanted to go to Brazil. Matter of fact, my last flight to Brazil got canceled. And she goes, oh, really? And I go, where are you from? And I kind of interrupt and I look over there. There's a little bit of a disconnect. Like we're connecting, we're having a moment. Then I break a little bit of rapport, look at the other girl and say, you know, where are you from? She goes, Venezuela. And I go, oh, I don't want to go to Venezuela. <laughs> and I'm like, definitely don't want to go to Venezuela. And I don't remember exactly how the interaction went, but that's a paraphrase. But, and then she smiled and laughed and said, nobody does. And do you see that there's a, there's a breaking of rapport in that one, but in a light, playful way that actually earns respect again. It's fun, it's playful. So on one hand, I'm inviting the first girl, uh, I'm giving a compliment to the other girl and she's watching me do a push on the, on the other girl as we go back and forth and create a conversation. So this stuff gets more and more subtle as time goes on. And as you develop it more and more, it gets more powerful. So I start thinking about ways to push. I always tell people, start with the playground. You know, you're a dork, you're a goofball. I can't believe you did that. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, you're so sweet, now go away. You're sometimes a pain in the ass too. Uh, don't be a pain in the ass, you know. I'm giving you like examples. And what I would encourage you to do is write down as many as you can. Get on the internet, search for this idea. Look for examples of banter lines and cocky funny lines on the internet and then when you write them down, instead of just reading them word for word, break them down and say, where's the push, where's the pull? How do, they, how do they go up and down? And as you get more and more of them and you look at like a banter deck, look a banter deck, they used to have one for Pickup 101, you can start to see the push and pull in the banter line. And, you, and as you start to see the push and pull in it, uh, and you start to specifically see the push and get a feel for what it feels like and you practice saying it over and over and over again, repetition is really important here, you start to develop the ability to do it more and more. It gets easier and easier with time. So I wanna invite you into this idea again. Get a banter deck, get a banter lines off the internet, off forums, and just break it down. Where's the push, where's the pull? And you're gonna notice layering of pushes and pulls in some of this stuff. See, so many guys just, this is what makes it a routine. They read this stuff word for word and they go out and then they say, well, I'm gonna try this banter line. I'm gonna try this. They don't understand the dynamics that are going on in it. And then go out and practice. Practice with people. Start simple, like I did with the cashier at the grocery store, the barista, uh, the girl in the grocery store line. Tell a girl, oh, you look like trouble. You know, that's, <laughs> that one's always fun for me. If it's fun for you. If you're not having any fun with it, don't do it and that's what it really comes down to practice your pushes practice your pushes daily uh, practice them in the mirror practice them on video cameras write them down i did all of this and this is why everything changed for me and i got better and better and better at this stuff uh very quickly i began to feel it i began to vibrate with it i began to have fun with it it became like two kids on the playground having fun and you start to develop a sense of freedom. You start stop worrying about what people think of you. And that, to me, is why it's so damn powerful. So if you wanna learn more about tension and how powerful tension is for attracting a woman, how too much tension can blow a conversation out, too little tension can cause a woman to lose all interest and just think you're a nice guy, then definitely check out this old video of mine from six years ago where I talk about sexual tension. It was a pretty popular video considering the channel was new and you can see I'm pretty different back then too and you but you can see the information is still really relevant today and I think uh, pretty powerful. So check out the video. I love it when you check out my older videos and then come back here and comment. Comment on that older video. I want to hear what you think of it. Uh, comment in that older video too but definitely check it out. There'll be a link somewhere in here. So make sure to like this video if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Make sure to hit that bell notification. Make sure to comment and make sure to share. We love those shares because it helps us to grow the channel. We love those comments because it helps us understand what you want more of and what you like and don't like. And, uh, and it gets a lot more information out as we get those discussions going. So all of that's really important. And remember, only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video.